All right, guys, what is up? We are live. How's it going? Zach in here. And in today's video, I am going to go over exactly how to follow up with your real estate wholesaling leads and how to actually close us. This is a really exciting live, guys. I don't think I talk about this enough or I don't go into it too much uh, into detail. So this is going to be a really exciting one, guys. So I'm breaking down exactly why you need to be following up with your sellers, exactly how to follow up with your sellers, and what you need to be doing for your wholesaling real estate success when it comes to your follow-ups. So let, let's get some uh, people on here. Let's see if you guys any questions. Guys, remember, you need to smash that like button and subscribe. Helps the YouTube algorithm, but uh, let's get into it. So let's talk about follow-ups. So what are follow-ups? So in wholesaling real estate, I would probably say 95% of all of my deals have been through follow-ups. And follow-ups, it's different for everyone, but follow-ups is basically the subtle art of consistency. That's the best way I really could explain this. I think not a lot of people understand follow-up correctly, and most wholesalers fail on deals because they're not following up correctly. So this is an exciting one, guys. So why do you need to start following up with your wholesaling sellers and your wholesaling leads? Guys, if you just have leads sitting there in your podio, there is absolutely huge amounts of money in those leads. There's so many leads, guys, in in the in your podio that you need to be going after. And the number one thing is, is just follow-ups, guys. I, I, there's no excuse not to follow up with your sellers. So uh, the number one thing I want to go over here is creating a system for following up. Uh, the best way for you to follow up is just to, to create a system with Podio. Guys, if you don't know what Podio is, Podio is a CRM. It's basically a management software that I use for my leads, all my follow-ups. It, it's probably the greatest system out there for CRMs. It's easy. It's cheap. I mean, it, it's it's free. Like, come on, guys. It, this is an absolutely free way for you to do your follow-ups and your lead management system. So uh, there's really no excuse for you guys out there not to do follow-ups. So follow-ups is the best way to do it. So uh, the number one thing I can tell you right now when it comes to follow-ups is how do you put something in a follow-up? So uh, let's go over what a regular lead is. So let's say I'm doing regular cold calling today and, you know, I'm I'm cold calling and, you know, uh, I'm calling like Ed and Ed tells me, Zach, I might be interested in selling my house, but, you know, I'm probably going to be selling it in the next three to four months. Uh, no, this is something where I'm not ready to make a decision right now. Probably in three to four months. If you can just talk to me, I'd appreciate that. Guys, that is the perfect follow up. That, guys, that is the perfect follow up for your deals. So, oh, what's the difference between that and someone says, Zach, I need to sell my house right now. I have this huge motivation. I just got to get rid of this thing. Completely different things when it comes to your wholesaling deals. So, the number one thing is if you have to ask four questions with your sellers, and if they are not answering these four questions correctly or the right way, this is not a good deal. This is probably not something I want to be dealing with. So what are these questions and how do I answer this and what's the correct way to deal with these? So number one, guys, I can tell you right off the bat, if you're going to ask them about the four pillars, so the four pillars everyone knows is motivation, condition, time frame, and price. So if I'm talking to you right now and I ask what your motivation is and your motivation is pretty good, but you're not ready to sell right now, you're probably good for a follow-up. If the condition of the property needs work, but you need too much money for it, it needs a follow-up. It, if uh, if the time frame is just not right now, it, it's good for a follow-up. I mean, my best deals have all been through follow-ups, and the best way I can really teach follow-ups is by explaining it in terms of like some deals I've done. So, I think the really one cool deal I can give you an example of uh, that I made a ton of money with follow-ups is. Most likely one of my biggest deals I did last year. This was during COVID. This was, I think, last summer. Uh, this was when I was still doing acquisitions. And we made about $80,000 on one wholesaling deal. This was an amazing one. This was that four-part vlog series. And that was the one with the uh, zombie suit house, if you guys remember that one back in the day. Uh, that was a fun one. But yeah, that zombie suit house, this was just a bad tenant situation. So this was right when the pandemic hit and everyone was really worried about what was going on. I mean, uh, the governor had the eviction moratorium back then and things were a little crazy. No, no one really knew what was going on. And I was talking to the seller for at least six months and just every single time. So I got the initial call from him uh, from a direct mail lead. And he basically said, hey, he's interested in selling his house, but really for the right price. It's a rental property. He's getting about twelve hundred a month. I did my calculations. He probably should be getting fifteen hundred dollars a month. And honestly, he could be making a lot of money doing this, but he's just doing it wrong. 
And I was looking at him, I was talking, I was like, dude, you can get so much more for this. I mean, you should just list this thing with a realtor if you want the most money. He's like, eh, I don't like realtors. I'm like, okay, well, if you don't like realtors, then just work with me. Let me go meet you at the house. He said, well, I wouldn't want you to meet at the house, but if you're not at the price I'm at, it's not going to work. So we didn't work that like that right there was not going to work. I, the property is worth about $150,000. No, it was worth 200. It was yes. Okay. We sold it for 220 on the market. So it was worth about 200,000 at the time. There's some appreciation between a couple months here and there when they got the contract. So worth about 200, I was at 150 on the house and he was at 190. Like it, it was not gonna, like the deal is not going to work at all. So I, I go talk to him and I'm like, Hey, I, I can't be at one nine. I can't be at one ninety on this property. I mean, you should just probably list this property with a realtor. And he said, no, I don't want to deal with a realtor. You know, if anything changes, I'll let you know. I'm like, okay. So this deal was not good. He wanted too much money for it. The motivation was there. I mean, the tenant was just trashing the house. They were paying rent, but they were just a huge pain in his butt. And he just hated being a landlord. So he owned a couple of restaurants and he was just sick of it. So I specifically remember this because it, it, it was, oh my gosh, so much follow-up had to be done on this deal, but it was $80,000 in profit. So eventually I, I call him next month and I see where he's at. He says, hey, nope, nothing's happening. I don't want to sell. Okay. Call him that next month. It's about March, I think. And he says, you know, uh, my tenant is, is late, keeps being laying on the rent. They're causing some problems, but I still don't want to sell. And I'm okay. So two months, I give him two months and then month after month after month. And it just six months later, like I call this guy every month and he doesn't want to sell, but I keep following up with him under my podio every month. I call this guy, see how it's going. I build a relationship and I keep talking to him. Remember guys, this guy's getting cold calls, SMSs, SMS text blasts, other direct mail pieces. And I'm the only person calling this guy every single month. And then right when COVID hit and the tenant decided just to stop paying because uh, their friend said, you don't have to pay for rent anymore. Rent's kind of fake now. It, it was a crazy situa situation with the tenant. It, it, they stopped paying rent. And this guy started hurting financially. And I follow him up. Finally, this one extra month, or I'm just like, oh, he's not, he's not answering. Eventually, he answers. Now, eventually, he wants to sell I, after he answers the phone. He says, Zach, I'm sick of this. I'm, I'm getting no money. This tenant's trashing the property. I found out they're actually smoking in the house. This is not good. And I'm pretty sure the boyfriend is like dealing drugs in it. After seeing the property, it was really bad. There's holes everywhere. I mean, I have the vlog on here. If you guys look up a uh, zombie house flip with Rick or zombie house space, Zach in, it'll probably be on there, but it was an insane deal. But the moral of the story is I started getting long rant guys is every single month I was following up with the seller and it just did not seem like a deal until boom. Like the thing with motivated sellers is just one time, like if I'll call a list of a hundred thousand, if we text that list every month, cold call that list, one person statistically is going to be at their wits end at the property. They need to sell cash. They don't deal with the realtor. They don't deal with anyone. And I found out you just call every month. One of them is going to hit and boom, you get a deal. And I was following with like 15, 30 other sellers, like on a monthly basis, really hard like that. And I knew if he was ready to budge on price, we can go. It was a tenant situation. I knew the tenant was iffy on there. And eventually I met up the property and I said, Mr. Smith here, we, I can't be at 150. I mean, the person smoking the house, you never told me that there's holes everywhere. There's literally soot all over the property. Is this disgusting? And he's like, what price can you do? Like, I got to get out of this thing. And event guys, remember six months before he wanted retail for it. What changed? The tenant trashed the property. So the moral of the story, guys, is you keep following up. Situations change. Sometimes your motivated seller, maybe they lose a job that month and they're just ready to sell. Maybe they finally get that job offer to go out of state and they want to do it. Maybe they're just so sick of everything and everything just overwhelms them that they, hey, I got to get out of the situation. It all changes, guys. The key to the story here is it doesn't matter the situation or what they want to do now. Everything's going to change. Like, just I'm, I, I'm going to say this too many times, but one's going to hit. That's it. If you are motivating with, if you're talking to five, 50 motivated sellers on your follow up, one of them is eventually going to have a situation where they just got to get rid of the property. They just got to get rid of it. And you want to be that person calling them every single month. So when they, it finally happens and they have everyone's phone number, should I deal with the guy who's talked to me? He's very nice, follows up with me, actually cares about me and, and talks? Or should I deal with the guy who just gave me a postcard that I don't know? 
guys, this is the difference between you doing a lot of really good deals and you not. It's just how much effort you're going to put into your follow-up. So I'm telling you guys here, follow up with your sellers. How do I follow up with your sellers? You might ask, what's the best way to do it? Again, follow, a follow-up with your seller is just contacting your seller and just keep up the relationship. When I follow up with my sellers, I literally ask the same question every single time. It just, it does, I don't deviate from it. Our acquisitions managers don't deviate from it. We make it super simple and easy. It just, it does not change at all. It'll never change. Hey, Mr. Smith, how's it going? I'm just asking you a quick question. How's it going? Seeing if you're still interested in selling that property or anything changed on the property. So if I'm talking to someone and they want too much money for the property, I'll say, hey, I was just seeing if you're still interested in selling the property. And if they say yes and say, hey, I know I couldn't do that $190,000 price that you were wanting for it, but seeing if anything changed, I mean, I'm still kind of at my offer, but if anything changes, let me know. And they say, okay, keep following up. Hey, how's it going? How's your son doing? Just checking in, seeing on the property, seeing if you decided to sell it, what's going on with it. Just a little easy follow, but it's, you're not doing a quick sales process on it until someone says, finally, they want to sell it, or they want to meet you at the property. Then boom, you can go from there. Uh, but that's the big difference, guys. Like there's in real estate wholesaling, following up is the key. This is where we separate the men from the women, the, the men from the boys, uh, the girls from the women. It's the ones that actually follow up. And following up it takes so much less effort than cold calling. And probably you make more money just going out of your follow ups than on new cold calls if you have that many leads. So, the moral of the story, guys, is you got to follow up. So let me teach you and show you some follow-up systems that I use. Again, I I am so shocked every single time I tell someone about tasks in Podio or how to follow up in Podio correctly. They're like, Zach, I didn't know how to do that. I was just going in all my Podios and reading each one. I'm like, guys, following up is easy. If you have the systems correctly, and these are free systems, by the way, I could show you. Like, I, I don't do a $1,000 a month CRM system for this crazy follow-up. It's just they're just reminders. You just click. I use call rail, simple and easy. Like that's how I do it, guy. Like I, I'm not this crazy complicated tech whiz. I, I wish I was, but I, I'm not. So let me uh, go over here and uh, pop it up here, guys. Give me a second. Remember, guys, we got big announcements coming. I believe Friday, the, the one I've been telling you guys about. So get ready. It's it's, it's on the way. Pretty exciting. So let me show you here. So guys, if you are in Podio right now. I want you guys to go to, first of all, if you guys haven't set up your Podio, search Podio Space Flip with Rick. There should be my video on there of me actually showing you for an hour straight, this is the most in-depth Podio video ever, on how to set it up, start to finish for perfect wholesaling. Guys, if you want my Podio guide, I actually have it, I actually created another one too. You guys have to go to freewholesaling.com. Below, go to freewholesaling.com. That's my Podio guide. All the stuff I mentioned is in freewholesaling.com. That's just my free wholesaling mentorship. It's probably the most in-depth course on wholesaling out there. I, I can I, I This thing's like a year in the making. It took me uh, to get all the systems, get all the videos done. I, I had to get all, everything edited perfectly. It, it, guys, that one, it literally put my heart and soul in that course. And it's, it's free, guys. And that's what I think the industry deserved. That was my big announcement last week. Uh, next week, we have a crazier announcement. And uh, that's an exciting one, but uh, we're, we're not going to talk about that too much today because we're just going to wait uh, until that day happens. But uh, freewholesaling.com has it. But uh, let, let's uh, let's open this up. So if you go to on uh, in the freewholesaling.com, I show you how to set up Podio correctly. It's got everything in there. It's perfect. It, it's the easy CRM to do. So the the next guide here is you want to start going to tasks. So if you go under leads, if you just keep scrolling down on the bottom, it should say tasks and click add new task. From there, this is what should pop up. Let me let me share my screen here. Let's see if this works. So this is what it says. Change the banner on the back here. Oops. Boom. Okay. So it, it says new task here. So what's going to happen is, again, this is just a random one, but... I'd love to put you in my podio, but I'm not having new wholesalers steal my deals right now. So uh, I, but the number one thing I can do here is you click new task. That's what, that's really what's going to pop up here. You can do whatever you want. So it, right here, kind of in this area, 
is prepare for all hands meeting. Actually, wait. Yeah. So right here says prepare for all hands meeting. I just put follow up with Nancy Smith, the person on your team that has to do it. And then on the information, just say follow up about property. See if they're interested in selling it. You can put in a special label, attach a file if you want. And then you can literally go, there's a little calendar uh, right on the bottom uh, there. And you can actually add the address that you want that task being done at. And it does it for you. It will create it. And then eventually you do enough follow-ups. It'll actually start looking like this. Let me get the other thing out here. Let me pop it up. And then on your activity dashboard, if, if you're at freewholesaling.com, if, if you set it up the right way, it'll pop up like this. So eventually it'll look like this, where right here, where it'll be on the right-hand side here on the bottom. And it, it'll look like that. And it'll literally be my tasks. And you'll put the address, what time. I usually follow up with the seller every other week or every month, depending on how motivated they are. And then from there on that bottom right there under my tasks, you're going to have everything you ever wanted on my tasks. Like it, it's all going to pop up. Follow up with Susan, get that assignment done, check in with Nancy. You're going to click view all tasks. You're going to click it and then you can actually just check it off right there. That's the easiest way I do my follow-ups. It's the fastest way to do your follow-ups. It's the most efficient way to do your follow-ups. And that's how I've had the most success. The, the number one thing I can tell you when it comes to wholesaling real estate with follow-ups is just having a system like that. If you don't like that, do a Google calendar and just create a Google calendar and make sure you get e email notifications for every follow-up you have to do if you don't have that many leads. If you're really at the point like me where I have that many leads, I, I need a Podio to really be doing a lot of the heavy lifting for me. So th that's what I would uh, basically say on there. It, it's the most efficient way to do your follow-ups. It's the best one I found success with. If there's something better, you let me know. But uh, this is it, guys. Follow-ups. Guys, I can give you a million stories uh, about follow-ups. I, I had one follow-up. I think, should I say it? Yeah, I, I'll tell you this follow-up. This is a fun one. I did a video on this one. We made $50,000 on this deal. This was two years ago. I met with this guy, this, this seller, on a vacant property. They lived in the same city. It was just a vacant probate deal. I went to meet with the seller. How many times? Guys, I want you to put in the comments. I'm actually kind of curious on this one. This deal was the craziest follow-up I've done. How many times do you think I went to the seller's house before I got a contract signed? And this isn't the, the property in question. This is their personal residence. So this deal was in Port St. Lucie, Florida. And this man had a probate situation and the property was just vacant for like seven years. No one got to it. And it was just every wholesaler tried and they never got through. And this person was like a mess when it came to, to following up. But eventually I went the person eight times. That's the answer, eight. I went to the person's house on eight physical follow-ups because they never wanted to answer their phone. They didn't trust landlines. I went to their house eight times for follow-ups, once a month for eight months straight. Eventually I got a contract and we got the deal. So it was a probate. So the property was on the east side of Port St. Lucie and uh, they lived on the west side of Port St. Lucie. So uh, it was just a vacant property sitting for seven years. I had to go meet this person because I they answered the phone once randomly by, by the just, it, it, it was it was amazing. Like they answered the phone. They never answered their phone. They just randomly wanted to answer their phone one day. And they said, you know, I'm kind of interested in selling my house, but I, I, I don't think I want to sell it right now. And that was it. Like I, I got, I got their address and I actually got their address where they lived in. Cause I want to go meet them. And they said, eh, I don't really want to think we should meet. I don't like answering my phone too much. So it's, it's probably best to have another great day. And it was, a, it was crazy. The property is vacant for seven years. I drove by the house. The thing was, the grass was huge. Like the grass was all over the place and uh, the property was just decrepit. There was a huge code violations on the house. And I met with the guy once and he said, hey, I appreciate you coming by. But no, I'm not interested in selling it. He said, I get 10 postcards on this uh, basically every week. And he just doesn't want to sell it. So, and I was like, why do you want to sell it? And it was for sentimental reasons, obviously. And month two, I go to the house. I go to his house, not, not the vacant house. I say, hey, what's up? This is Zach. I mean, just swing by again. I'm, I'm, in, the, I'm in the neighborhood. And I kind of live by that area at the time. 
would you possibly be interested in selling it? He said, no, nah, not really. Month three, month four, month five. I, literally, I'm trying to get some connection. This person loved cats. So we talked about cats and motorcycles. <laughs> and every month I'd swing by, say, how you doing? Hey, how's it going? Any news on your uh, motorcycle? I saw a motorcycle once. And then this other guy, and then he had like this really old Roadrunner uh, from the 60. I think it was a 67 Roadrunner. It was yellow. It was, it was a sick car. But we're talking about road runners and cars and then month seven and then month eight, I come by the house. He, he's like, Zach, I appreciate this is like the perfect, I, I got to get rid of this house. I just got a judgment from the IRS. I haven't paid taxes in two years. I need some money. And I was like, wow. Well, would you want to sell that property? And he said, yeah. Signed a contract right there. He didn't even want to go to the house. It's sentimental value. Uh, we had a movers go by and move some of the sentimental stuff for him. Uh, we sold the furniture for him, gave him the money for that. And we bought the property, sold it, and made about 50K. Moral of that story, I guys, if you want a five-hour rant on follow-up deals that took me forever to do, I, I got a million of them. But just, just telling you guys, I went to the guy's house eight times. He didn't answer his phone. He didn't have a landline, no cell phone, no internet. He's kind of living off the grid. It's kind of weird. But Eventually, I got the deal. And I knew that this property was that vacant and that run down. I could get a deal from it. So, guys, you need to be following up with your sellers. That's the number one thing I can tell you right now. Follow up with your sellers. You will have massive massive success. It will change the game for you. It, it changes everything, guys. So, let's answer some questions. Let's see what I can do to help you guys out and how I can give you the best success in your wholesaling real estate operation. So, Pretty excited about this one. I appreciate all the support you guys have been giving on the channel lately. And uh, I, I appreciate it, guys. So let's see here. Hey, everyone. How's it going? Hey, Tila. How are you? How are you? Let's see here. Let's get it. Let's get it. Kevin says, hey, Zach, what's the process? What's the process after the contract goes to a title company, got it into a verbal agreement with the owner and looking at a profitable $72,000? Jeez. Let's go. <sighs> the contracts go to the title company, got into a verbal agreement with an owner and looking at it. Well, let's not do a verbal agreement. Let, let's get this agreement under contract. That, that's definitely what we want to do. We, we want to get this deal under contract. It'll give us the best success possible for our operations here. So that's what I can say right now. So get a contract, go to freewholesaling.com. My contracts, the downloads, everything's down there. And it'll help you out the most. So that's the one thing I can tell you right now. Go to freewholesaling.com. Let me get the link here for you guys. Freewholesaling.com. It has my contract in there. That's what I'd recommend right now currently. Uh, but a $72,000 profit, you got to get that thing under contract as soon as possible. So what's the process after the contracts go to the title company? You want to put your earnest money deposit. You want to find a cash buyer, get an assignment of contract, bring that assignment of contract to the title company do the walkthroughs, get their deposit into the title company, and then boom, make your 72K, bro. That's what it's all about, Kevin. Kevin it has been following me and commenting for a while, so I'm really excited about this. Guys, every single one of you that comments, and you comment like you comment more than like a month straight, like almost every video, I, I remember you guys. I have a very good memory. I appreciate it. I know Kevin shared on a comment like a couple months ago. He, he had some family issues. And uh, he's going through a lot and uh, he's got, he has some struggles, but he's, he's grinding, bro. So Kevin, I appreciate you, man. Keep it up. Follow up with no's too. No, I, I follow up with maybe. So if they have some motivation, yes. If it's a no and there's no, no motivation, I wouldn't be following up with that deal. Hey, Zach from Pompano Beach. How's it going, Brenda? How are you? Kevin says, Kevin, get a purchase contract signed by both you, the seller, and return that to title. What's up? What's up, bro? How's it going, Steven? How are you? Let's see here. Erwin says, but you'll need a buyer if you're wholesaling. Correct. Let's see here. Todd Foylton says, hey, Zach, what should I do if I make my list and it's too narrow, like a thousand properties? Should I take filters off or expand my area further? Very good question here. My best guess, honestly, for you, this is going to be a weird one, but it, it depends on the list. And it, I sound like a broken record every, every time I say it, but it truly does depend on the, the depend on the list. 
if the list is just not right, if you're not doing it, so a thousand, that's a really good drawing for dollars list. Is it a good, I mean, it's a good drawing for dollars list, but it's a good high equity list. No, it's a good vacant, vacant list. No, it's a good credit card debt list. Yes. Is a good code violation or government list. Yes. Todd, you, you got to give me some more details on this. Uh, if it's high equity, it seems like you're using listrei.com for this one, but I, I could be wrong. So you just let me know, but uh, appreciate it. Let's see here. What do you say when he answers, especially after he told you that he doesn't want to sell? So great question here, Isaac. If the guy says he doesn't want to sell, I ask a little more about the property and the condition. If he doesn't want to sell the property or he's hesitant about it, or there's no va- there's no like motivation at all on the property or him, probably just going to follow up with marketing. Now, if the property is vacant and it's really run down and he doesn't want to sell now, but he says maybe in the future, then I put him on the follow-up. That, that's kind of how I do it. Right notes. That's what it's all about. Love it. See, uh, Isaac says, or do you only follow up when you can tell their interest? Only when I can really tell their interest. Zach buys houses. What is up? Uh, contractually speaking, if you sign a contract and have to re- renegotiate, do you need to write up a new contract again? Yes, or you can just put an addendum on it. Just depends on what you're renegotiating. One of them is going to hit it mentally. It's it's a wide net approach. Like you follow up more if you do enough marketing. One of them is going to physically hit. That's the way this business is run. Like one of them is going to hit, and you're going to have success in it. So it, it that's the true difference between it. That's where I've seen the best people who've had success in wholesaling real estate. That's what they do. And if you want to have success in this business, that that is truly what I'd recommend. And that's kind of what I'd say. So let's get it, guys. Let's see here. God, that's so very true. Appreciate it. Addendum. Yeah, mostly an addendum. Zach, do you have any tips for finding the owner using true people search? There's no tips for true people search. It's just going out there and doing the work. That's the best tip I can give you for true people search is just doing work. It's not a fun thing to do. It's it's not the sexiest thing to do is go out there and just punch and punch in, punch in data and try to get deals from it. But I thought that's where I found the best success. That's where you'll find the best success too, is just punching in, following up with your sellers and having success with it. I'm telling you guys, if you keep grinding in this business, I promise you, you will find success. You, you'll do so well, guys. I cannot say it enough, guys. Keep following up with your sellers. You will find so much success with it. And now let's get it going. So uh, the best thing with True People Search though is just make sure you go do the reverse address search. That's where I've had the best success or go by name and address, but reverse address is probably where I found the best success. Cass says, class is in session. Teach on Zach. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yes. If you just search Podio Space Flip with Rick, it should, probably should pop up. K-I-S-S, KISS, keep it simple, stupid. Not calling you guys stupid, but that telling you, if you keep this business simple, you will have great success. It gets easier when we follow up. The rapport gets closer each time. We phone checking in. Can't wait for a big announcement Friday. Yeah, we're ready for that big announcement. It's going to be a fun one. It's going to be a shocker for a lot of people, but I think it's going to be a cool one. Ugh. I promise you one thing, though. Some people with the uh, the G words are going to be mad at me. I'm not going to say it because people get upset if I bring it up every time, but the G words are going to be upset at me. <laughs> I use Trilio for CRM. That's awesome. That's a good one too. I prefer Podio because it's free, really depending on what you guys like and what you guys want. So C-E-O-L-E. I'm kind of curious what that stands for. Hmm. Let's pop up this question. A seller told me seven wholesalers are already called. He wants to see what's the highest bid. He did not want to tell me his price. I gave him an offer and we'll call in seven days. Did I make a mistake? Call him right now. Don't wait seven days. 
or ask him to go meet him at the property. My question for you is, is there motivation behind that? If he wants the biggest bid, you should ask him why he sh why don't you just list the property of the realtor? I think, I think a lot's going to change if you start asking that. And once you ask him and he gives that answer, you can kind of go from there and see if he wants to sell the property because he wants to do X, Y, or Z. It's cool. But that's the one thing I can tell you right now. Ask these people why they want to sell the property and then ask them why they want to sell the realtor if they want too much of the house. That'll change the game for you guys. Appreciate it. Let me know what CEOLE means too. Do you put leads from Mojo to Podio? If it's qualified, if they go through the four pillars, again, that's motivation, condition, time frame, and price. Yes. Another question here from Thomas says, how many dials do you get in per hour on triple line versus single line an hour? It's triple the number. So I see guys get in between 150 to 200 to 250 on a triple, 300. I see guys doing like 50 to 60 on a single. And that that's just because it depends on the list though. So doing high equity, versus doing probates, you're going to have a different answering rate on that. Danny says, my number is being seen as potential spam. What do I do? If you're using Google Voice, get a different phone number. Pretty easy to do. You might need to put a new email in there and then just create another account, but it should do pretty easy. As always, great stuff. I appreciate that. That means a lot to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. Always great stuff. Thanks, Dion. I truly appreciate that. Karina says, what if you tell them to call you back before he gets his last offer to let you know what it is and what, how can you do be able to negotiate with them? Just an opinion. That's a great one. You always meet the first person talking to the seller or the last. I, I prefer always being the last because that's where I think like I have the most leverage for success, but ultimately it always changes. So you kind of have to see what you want there, but that's a good one too. Thanks. 60 was the guest 12, 15, 10. 10.45. Oh my gosh. 10.7. Uh, Denver Biddle was the closest. On, I, I met the seller eight times in person. Not not phone. Like Obviously, I called him like 30 times, but they never answered the phone. So I would say right now, o overall, like I, guys, there's no excuse to get to, like not to get deals in your follow-ups. If, if you have follow-ups right now where you just have leads sitting there, I want you to follow up with every single one that that's a challenge I want to give to you guys. Follow up with all the leads in your CRM. I'm sure you're going to get an extra appointment and some very interesting ones. I'm telling you, it's going to change everything. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, sorry. I'm just having this load up here. Follow-ups never end even after paperwork is approved. Yes. Rudy. <laughs> it's true. You guys got to follow up with yourselves after you get the appointment. The point of the video here is kind of talking about following up in general for the marketing side, but yes, once you get a contract, you have to follow up with your seller sale. And I'm telling you, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> I was close, LOL. Would you suggest following up with your old list as well as just throwing that out? Follow up with old lists, I, I, I believe. If it's in your in your list on Podio, then yes. Let's see here. And also, guys, remember when you're talking to your sellers and it's finally time to go out there and actually close the deal, with your follow-up, you just get the appointment, go there, talk, have a conversation, get the best price, and get on a contract. The closing's there. Again, you guys want to paint the picture before you go on the appointment. You want to ask them if I go there, are you ready to make a decision on selling today? Always found the best success with that. And that's the one I would 100% recommend right now. Facebook user says, hey, Zach, great content. Going to have to catch the replay. Signed up for your $2,000 course last week. Worth way more, by the way. Oh my gosh. Under wholesaling 101 module rules before showing, is that just a verbal agreement or something they signed before the showing? So what this person's referring to, it's it's not $2,000, it's free. It's probably worth around eight grand the course if I went to sell it. We just passed 3,000 members in the course, which is... 
mind blowing for me that we have 3000 people join the mentorship course on there. And it's free guys, but free is how to get on there. We had 3000 people, which is amazing. And all organic. I haven't paid one advertisement on that. It, it, it's amazing. So it's $8,000 course I give for free. It, it's shocking. I don't know how much other, like I see other gurus say we've mentored over 2000 and they've been selling courses for a while. I saw one guy said he did, uh, I think 3000 people in his $10,000, $11,000 course. And that was over like 15 years. So I think once we hit 5,000, I can start getting the moniker that it's the number one selling course for wholesaling and I sell it for free. So that's pretty cool. But it, it, it's nuts. So it, it's on par. Again, I run the biggest wholesaling mastermind in the country. And I, I'm very close to having the number one wholesaling course by num by amount of people on there in the country, which mind blowing to me. I think it's amazing that we're able, me and Rick are able to achieve that. So I appreciate it. So you're asking here uh, that, that rules before the showing on the agreement side. So it's a great question. My answer to that is it's a verbal. So the painting the picture, it's really in that free wholesaling.com. If you want painting the picture, I go over everything in detail on there. Again, it, it's under verbal. Again, guys, the reason why I have free wholesaling.com, number one, again, it provides a ton of value, but also I get a lot of, I, I get so many questions. Oh my gosh. I get so many questions that I, I feel like they're almost basic that like, guys, let me go through a entire course, go through the whole course and then ask your questions from there. A lot of those questions are answered in that course. Mustache Mike, thank you. Follow up X100, gotcha. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, Ozasi Igabor, saying your name wrong, I'm really sorry. Hey, Zach, I found the property for sale, but the homeowner is using a real estate agent to sell. How do I wholesale this property with an agent involved? So you could wholesale this with an agent involved. It's going to be a lot more difficult to do this process. I don't... I don't personally recommend it, but you could like, this is a completely possible way. I would not, in my opinion, deal with on market properties right now. I think there's just so much great deals off market. If you want contact the owner and just see if how long this agreement is in place, the listing agreement, I would, pr it's a tough one. Like I don't think in this market you should be wholesaling on market properties. There's some guys that do it really well. I just don't think it's worth your time. Talk to the agent, see if you get it for a good price. And that's all I could say. Like, that's all you can do. Wait for it to be not on the market. But let me know. I need more info. Is the property run down? Is the property like overpriced? What's the listing versus the actual value? You got to let me know. I need help coming up with an offer price without relying on my buyer's opinion. Okay, that's easy. So the best way to do that, relying on your without relying on your relying on your buyer's opinion, would just be finding the ARV minus repairs minus basically a little multiplier of how much like your cash price is going to pay. So you you might need your buyer's opinion on the percentage, but you can basically go off of Stephen. Let me know what market you're in. It'll help me out a lot. But let's do 80, 82 percent. Okay, Let, let's make it really easy right here. So. Let's make it very simple. So let me get my calculator out, handy dandy calculator. And let's say the property is worth $100,000. Okay, it's worth 100K. Now what I'm going to do here is let's say the that's the ARV is 100K. The repairs are $20,000. Easily that brings us at $80,000, right? We're going to multiply that by 82%. I don't want to know what market you're in. It could be 75. It could be 90. I, I don't know what market you're in. It actually great, greatly helps me. Multiply it by that, you're at 65.6. That's how I found out with my offer price. I need to get under this. So if I get under contract for 65,000, guess what? Make 600 bucks, make 1,000. If you get under contract for 40, I'll make 25. It really depends. That's where I found the best success possible on it. Steven says Metro Atlanta, you're probably closer to 60. If it's like lower price points, uh, it'll help you out a lot. Boom, boom, boom. Fred says verbal is trash. Lock it up first. We're talking about painting the picture, which is different than getting contracts. So I don't think you'll understand what I was saying there. Advice on following up with a probate lead. Probate leads are different. You're going to have to be a lot more, uh, how do I say, softer with them. You got to be a lot nicer. 
you just can't be down their throats uh, trying to get a deal done. So I'd be very, very careful when it comes to that. Uh, but the best way to follow up, in my personal opinion, with a probate lead is to go out there and just be a friend. That's someone thing. hey, what do they need? What's the situation they're going through and how, how you can help? Let me know whenever you decide to sell the property. Really quick and easy. The follow-up should be very simple. Hey, talk to me whenever you're ready to sell the property. Hey, how's it going? Like, let's say, hey, Jose, how's it going with the property? Have you decided to sell yet? How's it going with you? How are you dealing with the situation? That's what I would like. Very, very quick, simple, and easy. And just be very kind. That's the way I could really describe it. Keep your head up, Kevin. What up, Zach? What's up, Mr. Bailey? How are you? Josh says, how do you comp commercial properties, warehouse, junkyard, strip malls? The easiest way to comp commercial properties is by going off of cash flow. Grant Cardone's favorite word, cash flow. Figure out how much the property will rent for the cash flow and then basically make your own cap rate from there. Most of them are at like seven to eight they like. So you can kind of go from there, those numbers and see what the price would be on there. Jacob Carpenter, what is up? How do I pull a list from county records and what are the best lists from the county? This is a great question here and uh, let, let's talk about it. So what are the best best list? Actually, so how do I pull the, from the county records? Most of them, most of the county records are going to be on the clerk of the court. The clerk of the court is where most of the records are going to be. That's kind of what I prefer. Really depends on what you guys like or what you want. But Currently, right now, if you want to get the most county records out there, you're gonna to have to. It'd be the it'd be the clerk of the court. So it's easier if I kind of explain what are the leads, and I'll tell you where to get them from each one. So number one here is code violations. You get that not from the clerk of the court. You actually get that from code enforcement. Code enforcement's a great one out there to go out there and get deals. So code enforcement's number one. Number two. And just ask code enforcement for all open code violations in the county or city. That's where I've had the best success in. So I'll ask you there. Fire damage properties. You go to your local firehouse, ask for all the fire damage properties. You're probably going to follow up a lot with them. Again, hence another follow up. You're going to have to follow up with them and try to get that list. It's going to be tough. Probates, you go to the clerk of the court, click on probates and get them. Again, in freewholesaling.com, I show you exactly how to do that. Next here would be the water shutoff list. Go to the utility department, get it. Tax liens, you go to the county clerk of the court to go find them. Tax liens are a great way to get wholesaling deals. Uh, really good one. There's a divorce list in there, credit card debt lien list. And again, listrii.com has got a lot of other really fancy cool ones there. Laughmore says, hello there. How are you? What's up? Who here is who, who here who can become a friend I'm into capitalizing trends using print on demand? Okay. Uh, Juanero. S says, excellent information. Thank you. I appreciate it. Don't prop stream have driving for dollars feature you can use on the computer instead of physically driving. I don't know about virtually drawing for dollars on prop stream, but I believe you can. Oh, well, I know for a fact I got the prop stream app on my phone. Let me see if I can pop it up for you guys. I mean, I got the prop stream app on my phone here. So let's open it really quick. switch it up really quick. But I mean, all you got to really got to do is just do the prop stream app on your phone, go download it. It works pretty well. That's where I found a lot of success. So I would say the prop stream app for virtual drawing for dollars, I've had much success or seen it. So I'd be careful. Keep it short and sweet. That's another one. <laughs> I like that acronym. G dogs. Love you. LOL. Thank you. I appreciate it. I never been called G dogs. That's cool. Thanks trader. My, uh, Trader Migs, big surprise. You're going to pay students to attend your guru sessions. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And now, is, that, is that the opposite of guru? I have to pay you guys to watch my stuff? <laughs> I hope you know. Like gurus actually pay you guys to go watch their content. What do I mean by this? They have these big operations. They got like five full-time staff doing live streams for them. Again, the only person doing the live stream right now is me. There's no one in this room. There's no one doing like anything fancy. Like, so they're paying hundreds of thousands of dollars, probably 40, 50 K on salaries to do live streaming. 
they literally pay about probably two to three grand on, on Facebook and YouTube ads to get you to watch their stuff. Like they're paying basically you guys to go watch their stuff. I haven't done one ad. I haven't done one Instagram ad. I've, I'm, I haven't spent one dime for you guys to watch me, but I'm just telling you, like, gurus do pay for you guys to watch just, just so you know, like I'm, Hey Zach, do you recommend Mojo or Batch Dialer? Batch Dialer is what I use. I use ZachDialer.com. Mojo, the same thing really. I think Zach Dialer is easier interface, but they both do the same thing. It's the Lowe's Hammer versus Home Depot Hammer. Just don't get analysis paralysis with it and go out there and go. What's up, Ralph? How are you? Hey, my name is Ron. I'm from Naples, Florida, and I want to start wholesaling. What city should I look? Ron, this is a great one. I recommend Knoxville, Fresno, California, Richmond, Virginia, Hampton Roads, Virginia, Macon, Georgia. Orlando's kind of decent right now. Knoxville, Nashville's good. Mm, trying to think here. Houston's pretty good. Beaumont, Texas. So many, like, go to my top 10 wholesaling markets. And that's what I'm saying. My top 10 virtual wholesaling markets. If you go to freewholesaling.com, I have a new updated version of that one. Go check it out. One error says, Hey, I'm going to quit my job soon because after six months of learning, I'm sure that I will succeed. Greeting and blessings from Minnesota, Zach. I believe in you. Make sure you make sure you know you're making the right decision. And once you make that decision, you go all out on it. I'm proud of you. I'm not using Google Voice. Well, let me know what you're using. What about you? All right. Can you explain how the triple line works? Uh, what if else if three people answer? So if three people answer, it will just bring those two to voicemail and only answer the one. And they'll put those people back in line. So in triple line, that is the issue is if the person doesn't answer or the person, if more than one person answers, then it's going to put that other person on hold and it'll try to get you on there. It's the most efficient way to do it but you are going to miss on some of them. So that is another issue. Uh, he was a shrewd negotiator. He is too old to take care of the property. And there was a motivation. At least I think he is three hours away. He tried to work with Holstead before I knew my pitch. So did he want too much for the house? I, if you're saying shrewd uh, negotiator he probably wants too much for the house and he probably should go with a realtor. We're, guys, remember the wholesaling, we're not trying to, get every single deal. We can't, I don't want every deal. Only want the ones that want to sell at a discount. If they don't want to sell on a discount, go with the realtor. Boom, boom, boom. Thank you. I appreciate it. In my market, there are 69 vacant houses. Is the list even worth my time? I uh, do the whole County, not your city. That'd be my recommendation. Congrats. Course signed over 3000 and crossing 14,300 in our group. Keep bringing it Zach and Rick. Let's go. I'm pumped up. Woo! A great day, guys. We got 3,000. We crossed over 3,000 people in the course. We have 14,300 people in the Wholesaling Houses for Real Mastermind uh, Facebook group too. I got my, uh, I don't know if you guys see it. I got my Paris Saint-Germain uh, jersey today. We got Messi today. So that's pretty cool. Uh, PSG is my soccer team. Again, Dolphins and the Gators and my other football teams. But when it comes to European football, PSG is my team. And we got messy. Guys, you guys can see I've been wearing PSG jerseys for like three years straight. I've been a fan of them for like five years, I think. But guys, great day today. 14,000 people in the mastermind. 3,000 people uh, signing up for the course. We have so many people, over 15,000 subscribers on both of our channels and growing like crazy. It's absolutely amazing. So uh, we got messy today. So, woo, amazing day. I think we answered that one. Hey, Zach, I consider to change market. I'm in Florida. Can you recommend some in there? I'm concerned Atlanta, but the saturation makes me doubt. Kelly, are you in South Florida? Let me know. That will uh, help me out know a little more. What is the percentage in Houston and Austin, Texas? I believe Houston's probably closer to 80 and Austin's probably 83, 84. Thanks, Zach. You're the best homie. Thanks, Steven. I appreciate it. Uh, do you know the number for North Dallas? I've been calculating 70, but it seems just respectful offer is low. Yeah, you're probably closer to 80 to 85. 
in North Dallas. North Dallas is a little more bougie. I'll probably get better price point areas there. Gavin says, hey, Zach. Let's see here. Hey, Zach, where are the markets you do virtual wholesaling in? I do a lot in basically the Southeast. So a lot of Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. Uh, we don't really do Virginia. I think Virginia is a really good one to do, but we're just not doing it right now. And those are really where we've done. We actually do Michigan too. Uh, we don't do that. Like we're not too intense in virtual wholesaling. Uh, we'll do like maybe one a month or something. Like we don't do a crate. Like there's just so many deals in my physical market right now to do like physically that we're just not really focusing too much on the virtual stuff. See here, Caleb says, just want to say thank you for all your help. You're truly a, a good giver. Thank you. Loving the course, by the way. Thanks, Caleb. I appreciate that one. What you? What do you? Oops. What do you do if the if the county won't give the list of probates? You file a FOIA act, basically a Freedom of Information Act. That is kind of what I do. That's probably what I recommend: a FOIA act, Freedom of Information Act. That's probably where I find the best success. I need buyers in Macon. Let's JV Zach. Let's get it. My number from men is being seen as potential scam. What should I do? Try Google voice. That, that's probably what I would try. Wu-Tang. Woo. What research uh, do you do? Wait, what research do you use when looking for new markets to tap into? So I think I said this before on the virtual wholesaling video I did. I think I did that last week. When it comes to virtual wholesaling real estate, my the best success that I have personally found is just this is my personal opinion. The best success I found is just finding new cash sales and looking where new wholesalers are having a lot of success. If you're brand new into wholesaling real estate and you're finding a lot of success, my personal opinion is if you're finding success like very easily in like a market where like not no one really knows about, that's where I look. That's where I found Beaumont, Texas did really well. They got hit by a hurricane and like I didn't know, but I've been looking at statistics. I use a lot of list REI statistics on there. I use list, uh, I list source for cash sales and I kind of scrub the whole entire United States for you guys. And for me, for virtual wholesaling, uh, best markets for that. Samuel says, thank you for, thank you and Rick for everything. Got Sam. Thank you for the support. It means so much that you guys are supporting me on this channel. It's absolutely amazing. I, I am blessed. Just, I'm so blessed to have you guys support me on the channel. And it means everything to me, guys, that you guys go out here and help me out. It, it's truly a blessing. I, I truly appreciate it. You guys are absolutely the best. So I appreciate you, Sam. You're awesome. Keep it up. Congrats. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It, it means a lot. Let's see here. All righty. I'm going to pop up one more thing here. All right. Can you compare a bungalow shotgun to a arts and crafts home? What? Arts and crafts home. Let me, let me look this up. Let me look at, I, I think I know what you're talking about. Oh, rooms are directly connected without hallways. Oh, okay. Yeah, those are okay. And then arts and craft home. I'm not the expert with this with that type of stuff. Oh yeah, these are kind of custom. Okay, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know the difference uh, too much. Uh, bungalow shotgun are kind of cheaper. They're thinner without hallways. And then arts and crafts are like Victorian style, like fancier houses. Hey, Zach, I have a seller that does not want to kick her tenants out, but wants to sell the house. Is there a way to draft a contract that allows the tenant to stay at the property for a while? This is a tough one. So I have a seller that does not want to kick her tenants out, but wants to sell the house. Is there a way to draft a contract? There is. You want... If your cash buyer is okay with it, then sure. You're going to have to get a heavy discount. 
does the seller not want to kick it out and are they okay with you kicking it out or they don't want the seller does or does the seller not the tend to be kicked out period i kind of have to know that that helped me out a lot so uh, let me know but that's kind of like i kind of need that answer so if if the tenant, if the sellers want the tenant to get kicked out, period, and your cash buyer wants to kick him out, then that deal might not even close. So she would prefer the tenant. I Okay. A, right. You need to know, does she, is it preferred or does she like legitimately care? Because for a wholesaling, they probably, if the deal needs some work, the cash buyer needs to kick him out and clean it up and then put it on the market and flip it. So if they're, if they understand that, then go with you. But like, I, I'm not going to lie to a seller and say, Hey, we're not going to, we're not going to kick the tenant out. And then you kick the tenant and then the uh, cash buyer kicks the tenant out and flips it. So I'd be truthful for it and just say your partners might flip the property. You can draft a contract, but in my contracts, I always state usually with a tenant, like, Hey, seller agrees to uh, vacate the property with tenants on the day of closing. If, if you're going to buy it with the tenants in it, Usually I say, hey, I'm probably going to kick him out and I get a really good price and there's a fee for me doing it. I get a better price on the property. Danny says, do you, again, I'm not a lawyer or a financial advisor guys here, but do you use a CPA to fire taxes and how do you pay yourself? Great question here. So uh, of course I have a CPA to file my taxes. It's a, it's a good number. So, and how do you pay yourself? I'm not a lawyer, guys. I'm not a financial advisor. So this is some tax advice. We're going to do a tax video soon on wholesaling. It'll be pretty fun. But I pay myself the bare minimum on my corporate. I have a C corporation. And then it I don't want to get too much into it. But what, what I basically do is the profits. I'll invest what I want to reinvest in the company. And then from there, I can buy at and then bring it to other co companies that buy assets. So basically... I reinvest what I can and the rest I literally just buy assets with. And sometimes that money will move to another corporation. We'll buy the asset to protect it in a C corporation, an LLC, a trust. It really depends if it's an umbrella corporation. It just depends what I do. But just for you know, is how I pay myself. I I try to live as humbly as I can. I mean, I got a decent house, but like I just, I got, I got a car, but like I, the best way for me to pay myself is I don't like paying myself. I like buying assets, especially assets I can write taxes off. I have a CPA do all the work for me. So the, the best way I could say that is I pay what I have to ba basically live, my just living expenses. And then after my living expenses, I'll, I'll go after, and re I'll reinvest in the business what I can. And then I'll literally do what I... It's it's, it's weird to understand because I'm younger. So it's a little different. I got no kids. I like I'm not married. Like... I can just put all my money in assets and it's a really, really good thing for me to do. So the best way I could say is I reinvest the money and then I give myself basically just the regular rate that my living costs are, food, everything like that. And the rest, I just buy assets. I buy real estate, stocks, I buy other interesting uh, companies. I buy other companies. I have multiple companies and corporations I own. And I do a lot of crazy stuff, but everything I buy is assets. I don't like liabilities. They drive me crazy. You see no Gucci. Like right here, this would have been stock that I would have bought. 10 grand, a $20,000 watch. I decided I want to put that into some stocks and I always do well doing that. So uh, pretty interesting. Natalie says, hi, Zach. Zach hi, what is up? Antone, what's up, brother? What's up? My name's Zach, but uh, what's up? I know what you mean. Uh, she would prefer. Yeah. Okay. I understand. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. MJJ smooth criminal always commenting, always providing value. I truly appreciate your support says what's the best way to wholesale and multifamily properties, like finding ARV comps when there's no properties like it around. There's just two syllables, man. Cash flow. It's all about the cash flow, guys. That is what it's all about. So that's the only thing I can tell you. Cash flow is everything. That'd be the number one thing I, I could just tell you guys is cash flow. Ooh, get the chair right. But cash flow, guys. So find out how much the property will rent out for, how much you'll rent out for if you renovate it, and just try to figure out cash flow from there. Guys, if you go to freewholesaling.com, freewholesaling.com, 
Go to freewholesaling.com. It's the number one course, almost number one selling course out there uh, for wholesaling real estate. I think by new people or new members every month it is, but uh, I talk about wholesaling commercial in the bonus section there. I have a little wholesaling commercial course. What percentage do you pay yourself? The max percentage, not on W-2. I'll just bring it to a corporation so I don't have to pay W-2 on there. Again, I'm not a financial advisor or anything like that. So how how my CPA handle that one? What do I do if I exhaust all my list REI lists in the state? I am in the process of pulling government lists. So government lists, should I dive in a new market? I made thousands of calls. Uh, what market are you in? Let me know. Let me know what market you're in. It'll help me out a lot. Let me know what city, market, whatever. It helps a lot, guys. So, I mean, unless you live in like Rhode Island, I think you're fine. So uh, the best government list, I would say, again, water shutoffs, fire damage properties, Code violations, probates. Did you pull the pre-probates? Did you work on pre-probate information from there? Do you do the credit card debt list? Do you do the lien list, the tax liens, divorce lists? Did you also go after uh, fire damage properties? Like, there's so many. Like, oh my gosh, there's so many lists to go after. Like, you should have unlimited leads, guys. Do have you done drawing for dollars? Like, once you exhaust everything, try drawing for dollars. It'll change a lot. Thanks, Zach. I appreciate it. <clears throat> Mo and Chris, what's up, guys? If I had one comp, but it was pretty much identical, what would be enough info for the ARV? If I had one comp, but it was pretty much identical, what would enough? What would be enough info for the ARV? Um, if it's a comp and it's sold recently, then that's your only comp. So you have to go off of that, but... That's probably what I'd say. Like it's, it's a weird one to answer, but the best way for me to answer that one is if you had one comp, use that one, but with a grain of salt and try to find the cash flow off of that too. Hey Zach, I'm in um, in South Florida in Boca Raton. Which market do you recommend me change in? Was thinking about Orlando. So Boca Raton, I probably would say Orlando is pretty good. Sarasota, I've heard good stuff about that. Pasco. I would probably do Virginia, honestly. Uh, Making Georgia, uh, some other really decent ones. Popping in late here, but here's my question for the day. What does it mean when the status fail and prop stream list? Should I pull the list following your instructions in the, in the course and all of them showed up as failed or sold? It's weird. Uh, what marker are you in? If you're doing high equity, you should not be doing any of that. So I'd probably relist, log out, log back in. And as call support on PropStream, they'll help you out on that one. That it'll work. Did you already talk? Yes, I did. What about PropStream offering drawing? I've been talking about uh, PropStream drawing for dollars for a year straight, guys. I've been, I've been absolutely talking about drawing for dollars for a year straight. Drawing for dollars on listrei.com is absolutely amazing. I 100% recommend it. I have so many videos on it. Do drawing for dollars PropStream space slip at the Rick? All the videos will be on there. North Carolina's, oh my gosh, has zero data on tax liens, divorce. All I can pull is vacants, owner, and pre-probates. By the way, how long does it take to close on a pre-probate? Depends on how far the probate process is. Some properties don't actually have to go through probate. So drive for dollars. North Carolina, drive for dollars. Find people to drive for dollars for you. That'll probably be the best list I'd personally recommend. Go to the clerk of the court to pull that information and you'll have success with it. If you can't get on PropStream or listra.com, go to the clerk of the court. All the data you talked about there is on there. Like I'm saying, tax liens, divorce, all that, vacants, all are going to be in there. Hey, Zach, what do you, what should I do to make my list? And it's too small, like only a thousand properties. Again, you, I, I asked this question, what market you're in? I need to know. I need to know what market you're in. And if, if it's too small, drive for dollars. <clears throat> you're the man. Let's be grateful and leave and like a share. I appreciate that. Austin. Hey, Zach, what should I, what should, yeah, you already answered that. So you're in New Jersey, drive for dollars. Same with me. The sun shines for everyone. Appreciate that. So guys, you said it, leave a like, share it, subscribe. It means a lot for me. I truly appreciate it. Zach, how many deals have you lost starting out? Hundreds. I've lost hundreds of deals. To this day, Excuse me. Hundreds of deals I've lost out on. Starting out, probably most of them. 
because I just didn't know what I was doing. Do you recommend a magnetard? If so, how does that work? Yes, I do recommend one. Just go to freewholesaling.com. It's on the bottom there. I'm telling you, the only one to do, freewholesaling.com. Columbus Market's amazing. The prop shim shump has failed or sold. You asked what market I'm in, Austin. Contact support, they'll help you out there. Um, I've seen that issue once. You contact support, they'll help you out with that. So truly appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much for watching this. Remember, smash that like button and subscribe. If you guys have any more questions, DM me at Flip with Zach or at Flip with Rick on Instagram. I'll talk to you guys. Huge announcements coming down uh, the pipeline. Pretty exciting one, guys. And I truly appreciate it, guys. Go out there, follow up with your sellers. When you have a pr the property under contract, keep following up with your seller. You'll have great success with that. And lastly, when it comes to closing these follow-ups, once they're ready to actually talk, get it under contract, go meet them as soon as possible, get it for the lowest price possible, and go out there and get some deals. Thank you guys so much. Truly blessed. Such a blessing you guys give me support.